How would you like to make $3 million in one day releasing a digital card that doesn't actually exist in reality, but is a digital card you created, and you were able to raise over $3 million simply by allowing people to purchase rights to a share of that card. Yes, folks, that is exactly what happened to your favorite boy on YouTube, who made over $3 million in just one day. And that boy is not Meet Kevin. It's actually Logan Paul. Logan Paul made over $3 million in one day, selling rights or ownership rights to something totally digital, artwork that he created out of thin air, which sounds potentially incredibly ridiculous. But then when you ask yourself, wait a minute, yeah, maybe Logan Paul sold digital art that doesn't exist and people are paying for it. What differentiates that from Bitcoin? <laughs> which is just something that we have digitally created. I can't go hold a Bitcoin just like I can't hold the art that Logan Paul is selling. And so when you start putting your mind to this, you start wondering, oh my gosh, what ridiculous world have we gotten to where all of a sudden we are literally so desperate to find places to store our cash and our money that we will resort to buying trading card pictures that somebody just created of, of themselves. Yes. Okay. Well, to understand what the heck is happening here and to try to understand or unpackage all of this madness, I think it's helpful to start by understanding what the heck fungible is. Uh, it kind of makes me think of fungus, which is potentially appropriate because there's a good chance this is going to grow like a fungus and it could end up stinking hardcore in the long run. Oh, we'll see. I'm, um, well, I'll save my conclusion here. Here's the thing. This right here is a non-fungible token. This right here is a fungible token. Do you see the difference? The difference is, much like a barrel of oil, a bushel of wheat, or a bucket of corn. I don't know if they're measured in buckets, but we'll go with bucket of corn. Bitcoin are fungible, which is another fancy way of saying interchangeable. Every one Bitcoin is the same as another Bitcoin, but enter into the space something new. A non-fungible token. In English, a non-interchangeable token, or in simplified English, a token that is different from other tokens. <laughs> and so each other token can represent ownership shares in something else. So for example, we could have 100,000 tokens that are shares of the Mona Lisa. So if somebody owns 51,000 of the tokens available for Mona Lisa, they would have a majority ownership of the Mona Lisa. And so this is where all of a sudden we can create tokens to represent shares or partial interest in digital assets or potentially even physical assets by representing those shares with tokens. We're basically tokenizing creations. You wanna buy tokens of socks, there's an option for you. You want to buy tokens in real estate? It's coming. You want to buy tokens of the Mona Lisa or a, a unique trading card? Mona Lisa probably coming. Logan Paul, it's available for you. So here's a picture of Logan Paul next to his digital creation, his digital art, which by the way, I met Logan Paul back in 2016 at VidCon. That was right before I got banned from VidCon, but we won't go there. Anyway, Logan Paul said that I should do voiceover animations because apparently I have a voice for voiceover animations. Bro, you should do voiceover animations. No voiceover animations? Yeah, you should. Thank you for that. You got a very distinct voice, it's dope. I don't know about that. Let me know what you think down below. Now, there are two ways to create art. One is physical art. So for example, I could draw a nice uh, portrait and uh, maybe I could sign it and say, I drew this and I can sell ownership in this piece of art here. I could say, all right, folks, I'm going to sell uh, ownership shares of this for $10 a piece and I'm going to sell 10,000 of them. That would value this cardboard piece here at $100,000 if I sold all of those at $10 uh, per pop. Uh, and then I could say, hey, you know what? You don't have to take care of it. I'll protect this. I'll hang it up right here. You know, so, so that way, every time you watch a Meet Kevin video, you get to see your 
art, which you own a share of. And maybe over time, if my reputation improves, which obviously I hope it does, my art will become more valuable. And maybe in the future, somebody will buy your right to my $100,000 artwork for twice what you paid for it or three times what you paid for it. Remember you paid $10 a share or $10 per coin for this. Maybe in the future, it'll be worth 20, 30, $40 because people gotta have their coins of Kevin's anime drawing. But it doesn't even have to be physical. I mean, if it's physical, I gotta protect it from damage. I gotta insure it. I gotta do a lot of things to make sure I can protect that piece of paper. I mean, what if there's a fire and then the fire sprinklers go off and there's an earthquake? Who knows? What if somebody breaks in and steals it? This is a very real and very recent example that has caused an insane stir over people really throughout the creator space, YouTubers, people on Clubhouse, people on Twitter, former athletes coming up with their own NFTs to basically sell you the rights or partial rights to whatever the heck they want to sell you. Maybe I'm going to start selling shares of this mouse or maybe this headphone right here or a digital picture of this mouse or headphone or the diamond hand guy. Hey, we should all own a share of the diamond hand guy. What should we sell this for? What should we value this at? Point is, a lot is about to come to the market in terms of NFTs, non-fungible tokens. And what's really interesting about this is, in my opinion, the excitement to chase investments in non-fungible tokens is really a, a little bit of a warning sign that maybe, just maybe, we have too much enthusiasm in the market can only go up, that the market can't go down. And it doesn't matter what you invest in, your investment will always go up. This is a little bit of a dangerous red flag that essentially we could be valuing digital art that was just created at multi-millions of dollars. I personally, I'm a little bit concerned that we could see an insane balloon in the valuations of non-fungible tokens. And then in the event there's some form of future market correction where all of a sudden Tesla stock goes down 8% or who knows, maybe CCIV comes out at a different valuation than expected and the uh, stock sells off 25 or 30% then there could be a crash real fast and real hard, kind of like Bitcoin losing 90% back in the day. That'll never happen again. But it's not just a market risk that non-fungible tokens could go down in value. There's also entirely the potential risk that, wait a minute, what if Logan Paul just says, hey, that one went really well. Let me just make five more pieces of digital art. How do we value digital art? I mean, I suppose much the same way we value Bitcoin, except we know that Bitcoin has a limited supply. And in theory, Logan Paul could just keep creating artwork and, and until basically people stop buying it. But then what makes one piece of artwork more valuable than the other? We can't really evaluate the condition of the art because it's digital. And there is no limited supply of not only Logan Paul creations, but there's also no limited supply of anyone's creations. I can create a trading card as well and sell you all shares of it. So personally, I'm a little bit skeptical of what could end up becoming, and we'll see. I mean, today is, uh, Feb what is today? Today is February 22nd, Monday in 2021. It wouldn't shock me that in a year from now, a lot of people got really, 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 really rich off non-fungible tokens and a whole lot more people ended up holding the bag of some colorful digital assets that had no limited supply at all. And uh, we end up having a much larger catastrophe and lack of wealth building, especially amongst the younger generations, uh, millennials or Zs or, or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but people who haven't been able to build wealth through conventional means, maybe stocks or real estate, or have built wealth through those means, but got uh, seduced into non-fungible tokens. And all of a sudden we rode a bubble wave and uh, oops, when it came time for liquidity, we weren't really able to sell because why would somebody buy a non-fungible token in a market crash? There's no expectation that those values could actually rebound in the future because a creator could just create more non-fungible tokenized assets. Personally, bottom line, 
I'm a little bit concerned about all of this. I'm in awe that this is a possibility that this kind of thing exists now. It doesn't surprise me that this exists. I mean, I do think it'd be cool to own a piece of the Mona Lisa or a share of it. I don't really see how it's different from somebody creating like an S corporation and saying, we're gonna divide this up into a hundred shareholders who wants to own a piece of the Mona Lisa. It's just more entertaining and sexy because it's a non-fungible token and it's digitalized and that's blockchain based which is all really sexy right now. But like if somebody came to me and said, hey, Kevin, we have an S Corp that owns the Mona Lisa. Do you wanna buy one one hundredth of the Mona Lisa? I don't think I would buy it. But for some reason, if somebody says, hey, Kevin, do you wanna buy one one hundredth of the Mona Lisa in the form of a non-fungible token? It actually seems interesting. And to me, that's a very weird fundamental mind twist. So these are just my first thoughts on this. I have to say I'm legitimately Confused and surprised, a little dazed, and I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. What do you think about NFTs? And if you took a shot for every time I said fungible in this video, you'd have some problems. <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching, folks. We'll see you in the next video. I'm gonna keep an eye on this, uh, these non-fungible token developments, and I'll report back with more information on this. Let me know what you think down below. Thanks for watching, bye.